I'm Chad and welcome to episode 2 of RC Peppers. I just want to start off uh, thanking everyone who took the time to watch the video, like the video, and the ones that took the time to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me to see this much support after just my first video. Uh, in return, I hope to keep making great content and repay you guys for taking the time to check me out. So in today's episode, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you my pepper in a can collection, show you how they've been growing. Followed up by that, we're going to do a pepper harvest. I'm going to show you how I dehydrate the peppers and grind them into powder. Followed by that, what we're going to do is go out to the garden and we're going to start doing some real work out there and start doing some digging to start doing some planting. So here's Humphrey the Wonder Dog. He's also known as the Watcher of the Peppers. And he keeps an eye on my beer can pepper collection. I've got a... Jay's Ghost Chocolate. This one's a Kangstar Lemon Starburst. This is a Borg 9. This is a Mystery Pepper. This guy is a Swiss Chocolate Cross. And this is a Purple Flash Ornamental. And you can see he's already got peppers all over him. So these are the Chocolate Butler. So these guys are called tiger teeth. So this plant is a Turk's cap. This little fella here is an orange jalapeno. This is a Scotch bonnet MOA yellow. The MOA stands for Ministry of Agri Agriculture and that's done by the Jamaican government. This pepper is called a Chichen Itza pepper. This here is my other red ghost pepper that I overwintered. Uh, it's not quite as prolific as my other plant, but still a lot of fruit on it. So here's what we harvested today. Got your typical red ghosts. Next we have the chocolate butla. Next after that we have the cheese and Issa pepper. We have the yellow scotch bonnet MOA. We have the orange jalapeno. The Turk's cap. They're really funky looking, kind of cool peppers. Followed by the cheese and Issa. These are all turned into powder here right away. All right, now we're going to have and seed the peppers. Um, I highly recommend that you guys wear gloves when you do this. You get this stuff on your hands and you touch your face or any other part of your body, you're going to remember it. Um, you have to realize that, especially with the, the ghosts, the butlas, <clears throat> you're dealing with weapons grade peppers and they, they can mess up your day pretty fast. I found a good way to save the seeds is what you do is use a coffee filter just label the, the name on it, and then you can put it in the strainer afterwards, give it a quick rinse, let them dry for 24 hours, bag them, you got your seeds. Life is good. I'm done cutting up my peppers for tonight. Took two full trays just for the ghosts. What I'm doing now is I'm rinsing my seeds. What you wanna do is once you've have soaked them all, We'll let them dry overnight, check them the next day, put them in a bag, and good to go. So, I just finished dehydrating my last haul of peppers. You'll see I've got my gloves on, got my mask on. 
It's not for coronavirus. The other thing that'll get on you that'll mess you up to start to the sea is the capsaicin. And so I don't want to be sneezing a million times today while I'm doing this. So, wear the mask. These are some ghosts. Butalokia. There's a second tray of ghosts. There's some orange jalapenos here. And I believe some Chiefs and Eatsa peppers. These are Scotch bonnets and Turk's cap. And these are Tiger's teeth and chocolate butler. So all you want to do is you just want to place some, some of the ghosts in the mortar. And then what I do is I just break them down into smaller pieces first and then start grinding. Even with the mask on, the fumes coming off this ghost are so strong that it just comes straight through the mask. You get a nice consistency powder. I'm a big fan of using powder versus fresh peppers when cooking. It's easier to add the exact amount of heat to the recipe instead of adding a certain amount of peppers each time which might carry varying levels of heat. This allows me to achieve consistent results each batch.
game plan is, is once I plant peppers on one side of the road, I can take the dirt from the other side of the road to bury them and then dig the other holes at the same time. You can kind of see I've done that throughout the whole garden. I'm hoping that this theory works, strategy works, and it'll give me a chance to be able to move stuff around while I'm planting. As you can see, it's the same thing on this side. And it was actually surprising how much easier all these holes got to be dug once I figured out how to run the track hole properly. You know, once, once you figured all the movements and it becomes second nature, I could probably dig one of these holes now in less than 90 seconds. Well, that's all for today. In the next episode, what we'll be doing is while I'm getting some plants in the ground, I'll introduce my line of equipment to you guys, show you what's been working and not working so far, and of course, there'll be a lot more wins and fails. If you like what you see today, please click the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet, and leave me some comments and let me know what you guys want to see coming out of this channel. Thanks again for watching.